you know, what about the high-risk behaviors? Just because you take this al alternative stance on behavioral change does not mean that you cannot confront high-risk behaviors. It's just that the way in which you confront them is a lot different. It's through the medium of the relationship rather than the medium of like pointing the finger, like what is wrong with you? Do, don't you know that if you're out on the streets selling drugs and getting in gunfights <coughs> that you could die or kill someone and, and, and you know, go to prison for the rest of your life? Of course they know that. They're not, they're not like stupid, they're, they're human beings, you know? But they're making these choices based on their circumstances, you know what I'm saying? So how do you do that? It's, it, uh, the example that I like to use is I met this one kid who, um, he, he was from a really tough neighborhood in San Francisco, really violent neighborhood in San Francisco. And this is not an exaggeration. He walked into the first therapy session and he opens the door and as he's walking to the seat in front of him, he's like, I don't need therapy. I'm a thug. I'll never stop carrying my guns. I'll never stop doing drugs. This is like as he's sitting down. I'm like, it's nice to meet you too, you know? <laughs> and, um, and so we talk and I say, well, you know, man, it sounds like uh, you, you know, I don't know if you've been in therapy before, but obviously never with me, so here's how I do therapy now. Basically went on to give him my kind of three-point lecture in just a couple of minutes and tell him about my style. And I said, you know, you know, whatever, man, I'm not trying to change you. If you, you he was, he's from San Francisco, I was like, you're, you're a 49er fan? Let's talk about football for a while. We'll talk about what you want to talk about. And the only intervention I used with him, because he was so resistant to any change talk, he was so resistant to any of that stuff, there's only one intervention I, talked, I, I did with him, besides just a general rapport building. And that was, and he was also in this juvenile detention camp, and he got to go home on the weekends because he was doing good at the camp. But when he went home on the weekends, he was engaging in extremely high-risk behavior and was good at it, so he just wasn't getting caught, you know? And then he was coming back, and he would come back from the weekend in our session, he would tell me all about it, you know? Um, so um, the only intervention I used with him is I would, I would pause when he would say something, and I would say, I mean, when I say high risk behavior, I mean like really high risk. Like he got in a couple of shootouts a couple of times, like big stuff. So I would pause when he would bring this stuff up and I would say, you know what, man? You know, I've only been knowing you for about six or seven weeks, but I already think you're a good dude. I like you. It's like, I can't imagine how I would feel if I came next week and I heard you were dead. You know, like I would feel hurt. I would feel sad. And so after that, we would process it. What was that like for your therapist to say that to you, you know? Oh, nobody's ever said that to me besides my, something like that to me besides my mom. Or it feels kind of weird, but it was okay if you said it feels kind of weird because he just didn't have the language for it yet, you know? So that's the intervention I'm using. I'm using the relationship and my authentic concern for this person as a human being rather than pointing the figure, what are you doing out there? You know you're going to get killed? Of course he knows he could get killed. That's not going to do anything for him. He might, he might say, oh yeah, you're right or whatever, but that's not going to touch him the way the other thing is going to touch him. If I've succeeded in creating a real relationship with the young person, Person, then I'm in a real relationship, even if it's just professional, you know? I'm in a real relationship and I care about this person. Not that I think about him every day or when he messes up, it's not my fault, you know? But I, but I do care about him as a human being. So I bring it on that level of authentic concern and that's how I confront the high, high-risk behaviors without putting it all up in their face with pointing the finger.